Thank you, Mr. President, for giving me the chance to amplify the, the, the voice of the Syrian people. This is the first time since I left Syria I faced the people who supported the regime in killing my father, in killing my oldest brother, in killing my youngest brother, in killing my childhood friends. When the soldiers came home to kill my family, my mom heard one of them speaking Farsi. He was an Iranian officer sent to kill our hope, our hope for democracy. That's when the people of Syria realized that we have more than one enemy and we need more than one friend. I stand before you today holding 14 messages sent to you, members of the Security Council, from 14 Syrians representing all of Syrians, all of Syria's governorates, 14. Each wants to tell you the following. Rama from Dara Governorate says to you, you have the power to turn our nightmare into a dream. So please do it. Ali from Damascus says, isn't it surprising how powerful you are, but how powerlessly you act in the face of our enemy? Well, Sarah from Homs says to you, my daughter is severely sick. Can any of you help fly her out to any safe hospital anywhere in the world. And you have Yasser from Hama, and he says, I lost everything on your watch. And you just like to blame things on other members. You blame it on Russia, just to push the responsibility away from you. Hiba from Latakia says, Syria has never been scarier than now. Even the supporters of the regime are being arrested by the regime and tortured and killed. Just so you know, I am not going to filter the voices of the Syrian people. I'm telling you exactly what they say. And here it comes. Karim from Idlib says to you, you have been acting so lame since 2011. I lost everything I ever loved. I lost everything I have. And he tells you, fuck you for not being useful, for not being respectful to human lives and human rights. You have Sana from Aleppo, and she says to you, all we need is protection. I am tired of being afraid from the sky. I don't want it to drop more bombs. Shiro from Hasaka says to you, don't let Russia and China and Iran play you. Act like you understand your position of power. You sitting in the Security Council, not in a carousel in Disneyland. What Ranim from De Reef Dimashk says to you, I am claustrophobic. Whenever they bomb, I have to go and hide in the basement or in a tiny room, and I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I just want this to end. Shadi from Qunaitra says, I recently, and he's a very young person, I recently tamed a cat, and she is right now in this conflict, my world. So please help me keep her safe, keep her alive. Her name is Judy. Maryam from Asueda. It always seems impossible until it's done. I know she stole the quote. We have Khalid from Raqqa, and he says to you, while you may think that the war in Syria ended, it did not. People are still being targeted. People are still being killed. Lubna from Deir Zor says, there's only one way. There's only one way to end the war in Syria. And that's bringing Assad regime to justice. The last message, the four, number 14, is from Tartus, my hometown. So I wrote this message. Since the start of the Syrian uprising in March 2011, Russia has vetoed more than 15 UN Security Council resolutions concerning the conflict in Syria. Among other things, this resolution covered the human rights violations, the use of force against civilians, toxic chemical weapons, and calls for meaningful ceasefire. Russia did that 
to provide political cover for the Syrian regime and to protect Moscow's strategic interests and arms deals with the Syrian state. So my question is, what is wrong with you? Don't you have any sort of humanity that you shut it all entirely? How do you sleep at night? How do you look your kids in the eyes? And don't you dare to give me anything about the sovereignty of the Syrian regime. This is just too lame argument by now.